a Democratic People's Republic of Korea flag and a UN flag stand at Panmunjom of Korea. Having an ignominious defeat in the Korean War, the U.S. imperialists signed an armistice agreement in the name of U.N. forces. At that time, however, nobody imagined the U.N. flag would stand for over 60 years. During the period, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea became a dignified member of the United Nations. And most of the countries that had participated in the Korean War established diplomatic relations with the DPRK. The United States, however, does not disband the UN Forces Command in South Korea. These days, the United States is making absurd remarks to cover up the crime of having used the UN in the Korean War and justify the existence of the UN Forces Command. In July 1950, the U.S. reorganized the U.S. Far Eastern Forces Command into U.N. Forces Command for the Korean War. The Articles 46 and 47 of the U.N. Charter stipulate that the use of armed force and command of U.N. forces shall be implemented by the U.N. Security Council under the support and aid of the Committee of Military Staff composed of the Chiefs of Staff Permanent Members of the U.N. Security Council. But look! U.S. military officers give and take a U.N. flag. The giver is Collins, Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army, and the taker is MacArthur, commander of the U.S. Far Eastern Forces. Now, let's see how the United States used the United Nations in the Korean War. The United States instigated the Sinman Republics to provoke the Korean War on June 25, 1950. Immediately after the provocation of war, the United States made a false report that the North Korean army launched a southward invasion and showing Trugbe Lee, UN Secretary General, a telegram from Simon Rhee and a report of the UN Commission on Korea, demanded the convocation of a meeting of the UN Security Council. The report of the UN Commission of Korea pertaining to the DPRK's southward invasion was a fraudulent document faked up by the United States. As was exposed later, a military observation team of the UN Commission on Korea finished its tour of the 38th parallel till June 23 and returned to Seoul on 24 and sent the UN Secretary General a report that no information confirmed North Korea's attempt at invasion. On the morning of 25, the team members were oversleeping themselves at a hotel in Seoul because it was Sunday. Instigated by the United States, the Simon Rhee puppets launched an aggressive war along all front lines all of a sudden. It was really tragic comic that a false report was read at a meeting of the UN Security Council on behalf of the military observation team of the UN Commission on Korea without their knowledge. The Soviet Union, the only UN Security Council permanent member out of the socialist countries at that time, was suspending its activity in protest against the UN's refusal to recognize the People's Republic of China. Availing itself of the absence of the Soviet delegate, the United States demanded the dispatch of UN forces under the pretext that North Korea invaded South Korea. Then, was the UN Security Council really deceived by such a trickery of the United States? Never. Not a few UN Security Council members had known or guessed the United States planned to ignite a war in Korea. Asked by reporters at a press interview in Washington on June 24, 1950, whether there were any catching news, Helen Kreter, director of the Central Intelligence Agency, replied under their promise to keep secret and not to make public that war would break out in Korea the next morning. The reporters were shocked greatly.
and sent an urgent telegram to their main offices. A war is to break out in Korea tomorrow, according to the director of the Central Intelligence Agency. Publication is not allowed. Reporters should be dispatched to the spot urgently. The telegram text was immediately informed to intelligence organizations of the UN Security Council members. Therefore, the brains of many countries concluded that if a war breaks out, actually the next day, it is decided and started by none other than the United States. From all facts, the UN Security Council guessed the United States to be the provoker of the Korean War, but adopted a criminal resolution punishing the name of the United Nations without an adequate investigation into the outbreak of war. That was how UN forces were organized for the first time in the history of the United Nations in disregard of the UN Charter. The US Army, which participated in the Korean War, rode roughshod over the UN Charter under the cloak of UN forces. MacArthur, first UN forces commander, issued a special order to U.S. troops, participants in the operation of landing at Incheon. Take Seoul. There are girls and women there. The city will be yours for three days. MacArthur drove aggressor troops to brutal attack on the promise that they are at liberty to rape women in Seoul. It was a diabolical crime against the UN Human Rights Convention. U.S. troops' brutal murder reached an extreme pitch during their temporary occupation of the north of Korea. They rushly killed over 800 people at the Ragyan mine by pushing them into a 110-meter-deep shaft after binding them by tens. In the name of the souls of the murdered, we'd like to ask the U.S. politicians who cry for peace and human rights on the stage of the United Nations. U.S. troops bound the innocent people and threw them into a vertical pit over 100 meter deep so that even the bodies could not be found. We wonder if the U.S. troops were humans or beasts. The U.S. Defense Department in October 1951 ordered UN Forces Commander Ridgeway in Tokyo to use germ and chemical weapons on a large scale in the Korean front. Upon the order, Ridgeway dropped germ bombs of different kinds to almost all areas of the north of Korea and even extended germ warfare to the northeastern area of China. Prisoners of the U.S. Air Force participated in germ warfare, talking with an international scientific investigation team, indicted as follows. I served the madman who staged a hateful war against the peace-loving people of the whole world. I poured germ and insects on the heads of innocent people in North Korea. I denounced the madman who committed such a massacre. Like this, the U.S. aggressors, under the flag of the United Nations, killed millions of Koreans and reduced the Korean Peninsula to ashes in the three years of the Korean War. The United States even had conceived a barbarous plan to drop on the Korean Peninsula eight bombs twice as powerful as that on Hiroshima. The flag of the United Nations that should be a symbol of global peace was stained with the red blood of Korean people slaughtered by the beastly atrocity of the United States. It was a tragedy of the United Nations. But the United States made a miscalculation. The Korean army and people rose as one man with a love for and trust in their own things and the hatred against the barbarians who burnt their native places. They smashed the myth of the mightiness of the United States before the world. 
the United States, instead of learning a lesson from the defeat, has pursued a policy hostile to the righteous Korean people for over 60 years. The Korean Armistice Agreement called for putting an end to the state of war and establishing a lasting peace. The United States, however, is violating the Armistice Agreement, bringing a large amount of nuclear and other lethal weapons into South Korea and constantly straining the situation of the Korean Peninsula. All the hostile acts have been perpetrated under the flag of the United Nations at the, at the time of the Korean War. The 30th UN General Assembly session in 1975 adopted a resolution to disband the UN forces command in South Korea and put out the UN forces from South Korea. The DPRK representative to the United Nations had an interview at the UN building on June 21, 2013. He said, the United States is still using the name of the UN Forces Command as one side of the Korean War. It is a result of an anachronism and a disgrace of the United Nations. He solemnly called for the disbandment of the UN Forces Command. Then, why the United States is still using the sign board of the UN Forces Command for its policy hostile to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea? The United States wants to make the DPRK an enemy of the United Nations and thus justify its hostile policy towards the DPRK internationally. It also schemes to invent a NATO-type military bloc in the Asia-Pacific region and thus contain and stifle great powers in the region and take a political and military supremacy. Butrus Butrus Ghali and Kofi Annan testified to the fact that UN forces were not placed under the control of the UN Security Council but under the US command and not a country allowed the United States to associate an armed force it dispatched to the Korean War or its command with the name of the United Nations. A UN spokesman in 2004 and 2006 defined the UN forces not as an army of the United Nations, but a US-led army. It is an expression of indignation of the United Nations at the United States, smearing the reputation of the UN and an appeal of history to dissolve the UN forces command. The United States should immediately disband the UN forces command sentenced to death by history and put out its aggressor troops. Thank you.